All right, so this is going to be our second lesson here on uh, reducing radicals. So um, the index is the number that's outside of the radical. So this number right here or this number right here. Implied on that, normally when we're looking at square roots, the implied index is a 2. You just never see it, which is the whole reason that we wanted pairs of numbers to come out from underneath the radical. So in this particular problem right here, um, 27 factors out to 3 times 9, and then the 9 is the same thing as 3 times 3. So again, you take your end pieces, your branch pieces, and you put them out. So the cubed root of 27 is the same thing as the cubed root of 3 times 3 times 3. Now, because we have a 3 here instead of a 2, in order for me to pull a group out to get one of them out, I have to have 1, 2, 3. All right? So when these guys come out, only one of them is left. So the cubed root of 27 equals 3. All right, so the second problem here, the fifth root of 96, I'm going to again want to find my factor trees. Here, let me use a different color, uh, blue. All right, 96. I know I can divide it by 2, so 96 divided by 2 gives me 48. 48, I know, is 2 and, well, I think it's 24. There you go. 24, 2 and 12, 2 and 6, 2 and 3. So again, you want to look at all the end numbers and then replace them under your new radical. So the cubed or the fifth root of 96 is going to be the same as 2 times 2 times 2. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So 4 and 5 times 3. So this number right here tells me how many I need to get one group out. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. All of these guys are going to get bunched together, pulled out, and you're only going to have one number. So 2, and what's left over underneath the square root is the 3. So our answer to the fifth root of 96 is 2 times the square root of 3. Oh, I'm sorry, the fifth root of 3. Got to keep our terminology on here. All right, so last one. Why don't you go ahead and pause it at this point and try this one out for yourself. See how good you guys can do this. All right, so again here, I want to split this whole thing out. So I know that 16 has, my, has a factor tree of 2 and 8, 2 and 4, and 2 and 2. So take those numbers. I'm going to group them underneath here. So the fourth root, this is going to be a long one, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then I'm going to have 8 x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to have 10 y's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's not forget our little multiplication symbols. Alright, carry the line all the way over. Now again, if you understand how to pull these out, you don't need to write them all out. But this is just to kind of show you what's going on. Remember, I want groups of four. So here's one group. Here's another group. Another group right here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I can't make two groups with this one. So these guys are going to be left over. So what comes out then is the two an x, another x, 
and then a y, and a second y, with the leftover being my two y's at the end. So then just simplify this down again. x times x is x squared, y times y is y squared. Since there's no number to multiply here, it just stays as a 2. And so I get x squared, y squared. Oop, what did I forget here is my index, huh? So 4y squared. Yay! This was kind of a hard one. Again, this is not something that we'll see a lot of, but it does come up from time to time. So we need to understand what it is that we're looking at. So... That concludes our lesson for today.